Greetings and welcome back to Castle Goat. In your absence since... Oh, whoa, whoa, oh my god. Really? Honestly? Uh, you didn't even give me time to welcome people back, you rude salt. Okay, well. Too long, didn't read version. The trader came in, I checked out what they had. The only thing worth having was wool, which came to a grand total of 28 gnome bucks. So I just traded off some, I can't even remember what it was that I traded, something very, very lacking in value. And we bought the wool. I didn't bother recording it because for the sake of buying 28 gnome bucks worth of wool, I thought you could live without seeing the market screen for that. But now we are being invaded by Mance. Damn it. Okay, ring the alarm bell, please. And whilst you're all doing that, please get into the correct Mance Lane uniforms and Frenzy. And the militia commander should get into their captain uniform. Okay. Right, how many Mance are we dealing with? We've got one there, one there, and how many here? Probably a million. Oh, okay, three so far. Uh, okay, five. Well, you know, it could be worse, I suppose. Not by much, but it could be. Uh, quickly now, quickly, we need that bell rung, because uh, this is going to be bad. Please. Oh, dear. Come on. Right, okay. Who is it that's fighting? We have got Sir Prancy. And how are you doing, Sir Prancy? You in good health? And you're fully kitted out? Okay, that's good. Now then, let's see. Hopefully we can get everyone down here to uh, join in the fight. In fact, we kind of need you all there now. There are three mans attacking Sir Prancy by himself. So uh, we need you to just grab your gear and get down there to help. This could be a bad fight because there are a lot of mans on one person. So we need to start taking them out as soon as possible. That's right, knock them back. Stop them from engaging. Ooh, did I hear blood? No? Is there any blood on the floor? I hear a squelchy sound. That makes me worry. No? Okay. Hmm. Still, I worry. Okay, let's uh, go slowly then. Hopefully we can take this out without too much problem. We are separating them a bit, knocking them back. I think that's probably stunning them. The mantis died. Oh, thank goodness, Sir Pranty disappeared. I for... Oh. My heart leapt into my mouth then. Not literally, of course. It doesn't belong in my mouth. It belongs in my chest. And it's, it's kind of hard to get there. It's not connected to my esophagus in any way, thankfully. If it were, that would be very, very awkward. You actually de-armed the mount. Well done. So that's down to four against Sir Prancy, probably three against Sir Prancy. What have we got? Okay, they're going down. They're dropping like flies. Well done, everyone. Fantastic work, in fact. Right, you can uh, sound the all clear and go back to your normal roles. Wow. I was a little bit panicked there when I saw uh, Sir Prancy taking on five mans at the same time. Lizzie wasn't there to help. Though, I am wondering if having two people with the taunt ability next to each other is really helping me in any way, shape, or form, because they don't seem to taunt off each other. What I'd hoped was that they would basically juggle the enemies, so the enemies would, would waste time switching targets all the time. But that doesn't seem to be what happens. They seem to go to one of the people taunting for the entire duration of the fight. So uh, I may have to look into that and see if perhaps uh, a different setup would be better. But it's worked for us so far, even though there have been a few close calls. Oh, we're da out of dapper tea! My lord! This is what we get for trading away all the crap dapper tea. Hopefully, though, they can uh, restock our dapper tea supplies. Because this is how I tell whether we've got any drinks at all. Uh, okay, well, I'm assuming our brewer is uh, eating something at the moment and just otherwise chilling out. And everyone is asleep, more or less. I can't begrudge at them. They did have a big old fight with some mans just now. Now then, there are some trees out there that I would like chopped down. So how about we fell these trees? If we can get our uh, lumberjacks out there early enough, then we don't have to worry about goblins. But otherwise, I may send them back in. Oh, it's she lab. She'll just walk through this area. She is literally, well, she's just quite ridiculously good at uh, chopping down trees. 
despite the fact that she only has one arm. I'm pretty impressed. And it appears that uh, my MIRC client has just closed. How rude. Okay, hopefully those uh, logs are brought in, but we don't really need it at the moment. We did just buy an awful lot. So, next thing we want to check is this. Those haven't been done yet, so we do still need a couple of birch. But what we can do is extend this stockpile out because it's all the same thing as for this though i would like to continue building the crates there i would also like to deconstruct this one is that just a birch crate yes it is do i have any pine crates and i know this is this is ridiculous this is a level of ridiculousness that you haven't seen from me before but damn it i'm so close to having it all color coordinated I can't resist the siren call of color coordination. Uh, let's see, we've got an orange wood barrel. Pop you there, and I believe we've got another birch barrel. I might not though. Yes, we've got another birch barrel, and it's full of grape wine. Well, that should actually be somewhere completely different, but we'll place them there. And then, there we go. Once that's moved, we'll move a pan crate over. But for now, with the excitement out of the way, and all of those logs already in the fort. My lord, that was good. Well done, you. It is night time, though. Are there any goblins out there? Anyone come to try and steal our riches from us? No? Doesn't seem it. Well, I'm going to pause the recording there, and uh, I shall bring you back when there is something interesting to report, which will almost certainly not be me colour-coordinating our stockpiles. So, uh, see you in a few moments. Oh, actually, no? Is that Yes, the sound is changing. Okay, well, at least you stopped me before I actually faded out. Let's see, we've got some iron wielders. What are you like? You're a goblin soldier. Okay, so you will have some decent skills, possibly. Two iron warhammers and a hammer skill of 20. Uh, no, actually, that's quite bad. What about you? Goblin fighter. You're not going to be that skilled. You've got a hammer and shield. Ironically, you're actually better than the soldier. Now, soldiers are actually meant to be better than fighters. I'm not just making this up. But uh, apparently, no. No, they're not. In this case, they are not. Okay, well, I may as well uh, get this out of the way then. It is already set up to disarm. I'm glad I went to the effort of doing that. Goblin slaying, please. And you back into your normal clothes. Once I've actually got some decent leather, I may actually give out all of our militia commanders ogre leather just because they are militia commanders at the end of the day they may not be a part of our actual standing army army they may not really be military officers but still they are leading a group of people and they deserve to uh, stand out a little bit we'll give them maybe ogre leather and everyone else yak leather that way i will feel confident enough to leave them in their their armor then at that point rather than take them out all the time and i'll cut down a huge amount of the micromanagement but uh, for now, let's see how this goes. Let's get this alarm bell rung. The other thing I've been toying with is actually adding a horticultural skill to everyone. But put it below hauling or just above hauling so that uh, they'll do their normal jobs first. But if there's nothing else for them to do and they would normally do hauling, if there's any horticultural jobs like planting saplings or, or taking clippings, they'll go and do that at first. I think that might actually be a, a fairly fairly good idea since that would help everyone get a little bit faster and then ring this bell everyone has rung the bell good work all right let's get everyone in their clothes and then out to fight please the gnomes are marching off to war and they're leaving sandwiches on the floor as they go my goodness all right let's see how this goes is there already blood on the floor it appears to be goblin blood Lots of goblin blood. Good. Worn bronze warhammer. Worn bronze hammer. Okay. Well, a couple of them have been disarmed already. This is what I mean about the disarm perk being a little bit better than the frenzy perk when fighting goblins. Is that they have now been reduced to biting and punching. Which, for an ogre, is quite effective. For a goblin, against armoured opponents, not nearly effective enough. They w Ooh, wow, that's not good. Why? He's been split up from the rest of you. That's not good at all. I don't like this. Who's there? Blank Okay, we've got the vampire, me, Alana, our goddess of war. 
troll of reason, our laborer, but uh, we don't actually have any of the military in this group. That's interesting. I wonder if they are actually still taunted, if they're like dazed and trying to get back to the fight, or if they are actually fighting back. No, it looked like they were taunted still. They were trying to get back to the opponents. Those hammers coming really useful in just splitting up the enemy and, and preventing them from really getting involved in the fight. Get back in there, you bunch of cowards. Come on, they're wearing a helmet. That's all they've got. You don't need to be afraid of them. Okay, on that note, I am going to uh, fade out now. I will, I think, set up the horticultural skill, as I was suggesting, whilst uh, we're faded out and get the door rebuilt. But uh, I shall see you back here when there is something interesting going on. So hopefully only a few minutes. Okay. I brought you back because we appear to have finished the statues. So I'm going to get rid of some of these. Let's deconstruct the... Let's get rid of the granite ones. Since I'm more likely to put those somewhere else. And as soon as those are moved, we'll uh, place down the copper statues that we've put together. Let's see, is the other one stored in there yet? Oh, are they both there? Oh yes, okay, well fair enough then. How good are these? A poorly crafted copper statue, really? Come on now. No! Oh, okay, phew. Right, okay. So, these should have both now been changed. It was just announcing that one of the ambassadors had uh, changed from acceptable to unacceptable um, conditions and the met requirements. Uh, we want statues and we want, where are you, copper statues. Okay. Now, these should bump up the worth a fair bit. Hopefully. We'll see how much they bump it up in a moment. They're worth 450, so uh, these two by themselves should make these rooms remarkably valuable. Let's check them out. So, your quarters are now 999, and yours are 1072. Okay, well, they should be more than happy with that, I feel. In fact, those copper statues are so useful in them roll. Let's uh, go ahead and have copper bars be made up to four. We'll keep four copper bars at any one time. Uh, one tin bar at any one time, 37 bronze, etc, etc. Uh, this way we can have some copper statues made. Let's put, uh, let's get another four made. Where are you? Copper statues. In fact, at that sort of uh, increase, I might want to stick them in quite a few more of our bedrooms, honestly. Those are going to be very, very useful. Uh, hmm. Just realised that you guys don't really have much in your rooms in terms of uh, comforts, like, I don't know, dresses. Perhaps I should change that. I, I feel it's a slight oversight on my part. They are small rooms, though. But uh, what we could do is give you better statues. Some very, very nice statues. Maybe even silver statues in your rooms. Given that you are the military. And we could place the statues that I've just taken out of those rooms in everyone else's quarters. Yeah, I quite like those ideas. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, build those statues that we just took down. So we should have some granite statues. And we'll go ahead and build them. Uh, I think there's a torch for there, so, like so. And that should be good enough, I think. I may want to move the torch, though, so I can have a dresser next to that wall. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. I had put the torches there because I didn't want... Uh, well, actually, I still don't want that. I don't want them to have to necessarily walk past the torches. I know they probably do. And it makes no difference to them whatsoever, but it just doesn't make sense to me. They need space to move around the uh, flickering torches. Okay, are we starting to get some dapper drinks? Yes, we are. We've got up to 14 dapper drinks. I am pleased. Okay. All right, well, let's check on our leather worker. Let's see. How are you doing in here? If I wanted to make a helm... Would I be able to select what I make out out of? Yes, I would. Fantastic. Okay. Well then. We want some ogre leather. Helms, curious braces, greaves, gloves. 
how many militias have we got? How many militia squads? I think we've got five, or is it four? Right, we've got the watched fortifications, glory knitters. Okay, we've got, yeah, it's, it's five. Let me just double check it again. Yeah, it's five. So we want at least five ogre leather setups. And this will be a, roughly equivalent to bronze. It's not quite as good. Um, actually, it might be equivalent to, to iron. I can't remember now. But uh, basically, the leather and the metal that it's equivalent to. So, for example, two-headed ogre leather is equivalent to steel. And what they do is they swap one of their defenses. They've got exactly the same statistics and resistances overall but whereas the leather will be better against blunt and uh, and worse against cutting the metal will be better against cutting and worse against blunt but they literally swap their resistances so it's just that that one slight difference they're worth the same as well so let's go ahead and get a leather helm made of ogre leather panels and wood wool padding and wool strings we want for now one and then once we've got that one equipped we'll make it two and so on and so forth just so that we've got the whole um squad set up properly because i don't want it to say right make five helms and that's all they make they don't make one full suit they go through the helms and then the uh, the curuses and so on and so forth so I'd much prefer it to be done like this. So we want wool padding again. And I am I am specifying because we do have cotton string and cotton padding about the fort. And of course, these are all going to the very top of the list. So that they're done first. And then once they can't be worked on, they'll default to whatever's next in the queue. Probably ogre leather pa uh, panels. Let's get wool string. And this is the greaves. I think after this, there's only two more, the gloves and the boots. And then we will finally be starting to make our ogre leather. Now, the nice thing with this as well is I can, if, well, I could have our two laborers. Instead of uh, making this for our um, militia straight away, I could move our two laborers into our actual military. That is quite tempting honestly um, hmm. I may have to have a look at that and I'm not sure if I did the gloves correctly so I'm just going to redo those because I may have told them to use cotton padding there we go all right I uh, yeah all right then we'll we'll do that I suppose we should the laborers can actually then uh, just work purely on actually I, I should probably go ahead with what I said before no not 42 and uh, then move one of them at a time rather than trying to do this otherwise I will still run into the same problem that I was describing just now there we go okay get to work then once we've got a, a one set of ogre I will move either troll of reason or I believe it was elitus or elzen dwarf let me double check who are our laborers? Elzendorf. I'll move whichever of you has got the best combat stat into the military and you can start training straight away. And then once you've done that, I'll move the other one as soon as the next set of armor is ready. It shouldn't actually take too long to get that armor. And then we will have our first full military squad. This will be a momentous occasion. I best get those uh, statues ready to mark it. Now, what are we going to want? We're going to want one with a sword and one with an axe, I think. Or I could just give them both axes and just tell them to just wail on anything. We've got one person with a good hammer. Uh, or I could go for best of both worlds and give them both swords. That's also an option. Axes are better for just causing good damage to... Um, chopping off limbs but really really poor on defense hammers are good for crushing things again not so good on defense a sword is is middle of the road as far as i'm aware um hmm. ambassador from the rainy gear has arrived fantastic but i don't have the copper statue for you yet i don't believe oh this is most awkward i've got a silver statue though haha -ha! that's fantastic 
No, e well, yeah, yeah, I do have the silver statue. I should put it in there. Let's check. Have any of the other statues been made? No? Well, that's a shame. Are you set to make them? Yes, you are. Okay. Let's have a quick look at this. You're making the silver bars first. Um. Yeah, I suppose that is, that is reasonable. Now I'm going to move that down. Silver bars should come after important things like bronze, copper, and tin. Because they are used for my military at the moment. So, yeah, your silver bar is going to be moved down. That statue is not going to go into an ambassador's room. I'm terribly sorry, but no. That is going to go into our commander's room. So we're going to go ahead and deconstruct one of your statues there, Agisto. And then you're going to get a silver one. Well done. That was going to go in the Great Hall, but it is now going to go into your bedroom because you're worth it. There we are. Let's get that built. You are now going to have a remarkably good sleep. I'm not really sure why you're going to sleep better because you've got a silver statue that I am imagining is some sort of silver armor stand for you. But you are. You're going to sleep very, very well. Maybe it is in the likeness of one of your great gnomish ancestors and you can sleep easy knowing that you are being watched over and protected. Yes, that's probably it. How fantastic. Let's see how this increases the value. What is the value right now? Value is 650. Come on, and now the value is 1,950. Yes, I approve. You're going to get two of those as well. Well done indeed. But we do need to uh, set up a new quarters. Let's see, how much are these worth? In fact, let me just check something. Do the amount of people I have affect the worth they need in the rooms they've got? I think it does, but I believe the rooms that we've already got are so valuable they're not going to need anything else. Okay, well, let's designate one of these as personal quarters then. There we go. And this is worth, no, that's worth 720. Is this worth more? Ah, okay, bugger it. Okay, we're going to undesignate that one then. Move designation for now. And we're going to assign this one to the new ambassador. Or ambassador, not ambassador. Okay. Chris. There we go, Chris. We will get a copper statue for you as soon as possible. Probably qu quite soon, actually. Ooh, okay. Goblins? Where are you going? Who is this? It's a gnomish merchant. Oh, okay, you can leave. I don't need you here. Now then, have we uh, finished the armor? I don't believe we have. What are you working on? Let's zoom in. Are you making... Ah, okay, so these won't have anywhere to go just yet. So, oh, you make, you need one more boot, I believe. Let me just double check that, though, because one could have already been carted off to the stockpile. Have we got everything we need? No, I only want leather armor. Got a leather helm, curious. Yeah, we need one more boot. Once we've got that boot, then uh, we're going to be getting Elzen Dwarf or Troll of Reason into the military. Well done, you guys. But I think we're going to go for an axe. I like the idea of axes. But let me just double check that there isn't some sort of uh, requirement on that. So we've got the Guardian Shield Bearers. What should we call this? Um, well, considering it's going to be a sneaky one. Let me see. Have we got this around here? Yeah, just sneaky. With a melee weapon equipped and wearing leather or no armor, this gnome decre uh, decreases enemy vision range and had a has a bonus melee damage when the target has a different target. So, uh, hmm. Decreases enemy vision range. That's interesting. I can't imagine how that would actually benefit. Because generally, if you're fighting it, then it's already going to be in the fight. So, it, it, they don't ch tend to switch targets too much. So, uh, that's strange, but okay. We'll, we'll go for that, but it doesn't look like it matters. So we're going to make a new position. This position is going to be called Rogue. So, mm, I think it's like this. R-O-G-U-E. Rogue, not Rouge. Let's see. Again, damn you English and your crazy spellings. Why can't you be phonetic like Welsh? makes the world such an easier place it's all happy and full of rainbows and lollipops instead it must be glum and gloomy and full of 
complex ways of spelling things that don't make sense because they don't sound how they're spelt. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Okay, we want Sneaky, which should be at the bottom there. We'll set up the uniform in a moment. Pursue lost targets. No. Retreat of bleeding. Yes, all of those. And now we need a new uniform. So, we want the rogue. We want a leather helm. No, we want... Uh, well, I guess we don't get a choice. Okay. Uh, leather curious. Leather bracer. Leather greave. Leather glove. And leather boots. It really doesn't give us a choice. That's interesting. I was assuming that this, re this would give us the choice of ogre leather or something. But, uh, okay. We do want a bronze shield, though. Oh, wait. Hmm. Would a bronze shield count against them? No, because it would be counted as a weapon. It should be fine. So we want a shield. Bronze, please. And we also want... Well, as much as I would like to go with axe... I'm going to go with sword, because that makes more sense for rogue. We can imagine it's a short sword. So we'll have bronze swords. There we go. That is the rogue setup. So where are you, rogue? I'll give you the rogue uniform. I might change that name, actually, a little bit later. Oh, I know what we'll call it. We'll call it the assassin position, wearing the rogue uniform. That makes all kinds of sense. Now then, Poisonous Ancients, your two vacant positions. Well, actually, I need to change the formation first. Let's go to Garrison. The last two positions will be Assassin positions. I can only assume that that is the Assassin. Yes, it is. Fantastic. Go away, stupid pop-up. Now, before I actually put anyone in there, we need the shields. I believe we will already have a shield, um, but we're going to need to keep this up. We want... We're only making one shield boss and one shield backing. We don't need to make more than that, so we need four of these. There'll be three people with these shields, so we'll, we'll have four made. And we also want a sword. So a sword blade made of bronze. We've only got one bronze bar. Wow, that's bad. Uh, we'll put this about there. So we'll have one of these always made, and then we want bronze swords. Any sword blade will do. We'll wait for the sword blades, actually, so that I can be quite specific with that. But we are actually getting close now to having our military fleshed out. We've got two laborers, so we can afford to uh, spare the manpower. And, uh, yeah, very, very soon we will see our assassins join the squad it's going to be grand they're going to be able to do so much damage the only thing they're not really going to be able to do that much damage against is mants because the mants armor but they will be wielding a shield so hopefully they'll be bashing with the shield along with the sword and the shield is a blunt weapon much the same way that a mant can be taken down just by our shield bearers because they continually smack it with the shield which will eventually cave in its carapace we will have the assassins wielding their small shields along with their swords. So uh, they should be equally dangerous to Goblin and Mance now that I think about it. But I'm going to wrap this episode up there. We are this close to filling out our military and I'm very excited about that. But uh, we'll have to wait until the next episode where we will hopefully fill them out. It might be another episode, depends on what goes on. But I hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope you will be joining me in the next. But until then, and as always... Do take care.